Hi, how are you? I'm the Phantom of the Ore. Welcome to my Building Real Houses in Minecraft series where I take a picture off Google and recreate it in Minecraft. And today we're going to be making this house. Isn't that right, Mr. Cow? <laughs> So this one's going to be interesting because I feel like it's a very popular style of house and that's the Tudor style. But it's got a bit of a modern twist because I believe this picture is actually based off a modern day Tudor house that was remodeled. I don't build a lot of Tudor houses and therefore don't have a lot of experience with it, so I thought this would be really fun to give a try. At first, I tried using the usual brain coral tactic that you've seen me using in other videos in order to recreate the brownish looking kind of stones. I really didn't want to use them again because I don't want to be too repetitive, but I do think they look the best in this situation. Until they make a type of cobblestone that looks more brownish, I really can't think of a better option. I used dark oak for the wood framing and white concrete for the white areas of the house. I considered using quartz, but I use quartz a lot, so it's time to give concrete a try. This part of the build is pretty straightforward because it's very geometric and all I had to do was count the amount of lines that it was supposed to have and just replicate it. came out too round at first, but I did eventually manage to get it to that sharp angle that I wanted. Although in the long run, I still don't think the angle is sharp enough, but I also didn't want to ruin the proportions of the house because I really liked the way that I did the bottom windows. And if I resized this section to make the roof pointier, I would have had to redo the windows. And I didn't want to do that because I really liked the way the windows turned out. It's hard to replicate that shape in the picture using Minecraft things, but I think the fences do a pretty good job at dividing the panels to give it the overall vibe that it's supposed to have. After that section was done, it was very hard to recreate the little gutter you see there in the middle. At least it looks like a gutter. I can't quite tell what it is, but I made it out of trap doors that were opened and I thought it looked pretty decent. Until we get vertical slabs, there really is nothing else that gets remotely close to it. Although in hindsight, I guess I could have used fences. Yeah, I probably should have used fences. For this part, there really isn't all that much to say. I mean, it was all about just getting the peaks right. I knew from the beginning that I wasn't going to be able to make everything exact because of the nature of how difficult it is to make really thin window panes in Minecraft. I used dark oak trap doors inside this window here above the door to give it that little brown rim all around. the front door. As always, I can't just put a door there because it'll look too small, so I had to build around it to make the entryway look bigger. That's why I used two doors and some dark oak in the middle, and then I put a little window on the top and the little lantern next to the door, just like you see in the picture, with the little windows on the sides. I made the deck out of stone. And then I went ahead and started making the brick portion of the house, making sure that these windows here mirrored the other windows to the left exactly. Now this next 
next section was going to be a little bit difficult because first of all, I had to figure out how I was going to make these curves. And second of all, I had to figure out what material I was going to make this little hexagon thing out of. I don't really know what shape that is, but you know what I mean. So I decided to make it out of stripped dark oak and then used stone for the windows to match the, the deck. And that seems to go pretty well. And of course, I used my usual black stained glass to fill in the windows. I'm not going to do that for every house, but it just seems to fit with most builds. And then comes the most difficult part for me, which is figuring out where the roofs go from there and connecting all the peaks to each other. I decided to make the top of the roof out of stone brick stairs because the roof in the picture is a lighter color. This part here was particularly challenging because I had to figure out how far back the roof was going to go. But I decided that I wasn't going to make this house necessarily a rectangle shape. I was going to give it a slightly different shape in order to make the roof fit together good and look as best as I could come up with because I don't have a reference for the back side of the house so I kind of have to make it up so I just made it this little all shape Filling in the walls, I had to figure out what in the world I was going to do for the windows on the other sides of the house. So I decided I was going to try to replicate what I already had as best as possible and keep making these windows with dark oak outlines and highlights and then do a mixture of smaller windows and bigger windows. I did this little thing here with uh, fences in order to try to match the other larger windows on the bottom. And then I made a design, as you can see here, with the dark oak in the center. I made a little cross, a little X design. I'm not going to lie, this back half of the house was the hardest to figure out because you don't really want your houses to look as rectangular as this one. I'm just doing it because I don't really know what this part of the house is supposed to look like. But I can always come back and revisit it at a later time because, as I always say, if this video gets 10 likes, I'll do the interior of the house and I'll also fix any issues with the exterior. Now for this section here, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought that maybe I could try to give it a circle pattern, like a circle cutout type of thing. But then I realized in the picture that there is no wall there. So I stopped doing that. 
And then I textured the white parts of the building with concrete powder. And I put some andesite on the roof. And it's either andesite or diorite, I don't remember. But I think it's andesite. And then I used quartz bricks for the path. It was kind of hard to do because it was curvy, but also not curvy at the same time. So I didn't want to make it too curvy. And then this house has all these giant bushes in the front. So I filled those in as well. And I used different types of leaves in order to match where the leaves changed color in the picture. Because you can see there's some yellow, there's some flowers, and then there's just plain dark green bushes. I decided to use bone meal around the path simply because there aren't going to be any bushes or plants around there and it was going to look kind of weird without some kind of vegetation. And then I used the plants in this area to make kind of like an invisible path. Like if you stand in front of it, it looks like the plants are guiding you in. And I'm sorry if my words are not very well put together today. I'm very tired. But I also don't think there's much to say about this design other than I really, really like Tudor houses. I think they look beautiful. But it's not that much to talk about, you know? It's it's white with dark brown stripes and some stone and brick. There's plenty of examples of Tudor houses for me to look at in Minecraft to help me build this, but I just really wanted to approach it from the unique aspect of taking a modern Tudor house and trying to build that. And I think using the brain coral for the brownish stones is really what sets it apart. So yeah, that's the final build. Like I said, I'll revisit this build and do the interior, finish the exterior, tidy it up a bit if this video gets 10 likes. If you enjoyed this video at all, please give it a like, please subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on my social medias, my Twitter and Tumblr, if you want to see what I'm doing in between videos. And if you want updates and previews of stuff, I mainly do Minecraft videos, but I have other videos on the way, including Hollow Knight, Planet Zoo, Wolf Quest, and even a Blue's Clues game. So if you're interested in any of those things, stay tuned. And I'm currently working two full-time jobs, so I'm going to be very exhausted, but I am trying to make time to play all those games because I really look forward to them. And that's all I have to say today, folks. Have a good day.